An FBI initiative targeting serial killers who have a nexus to the nation's highways continues to grow. The Highway Serial Killings Initiative, or HSK, has led to the identification of more than 400 suspects since the initiative began more than a decade ago. Crime analyst Christy Palazzolo says more than 700 victims have been identified, with at least one in every state but Hawaii. We're seeing the trend continue. Yo. In today's video, we're going to be discussing some very sensitive topics, all right? Before we get started, I would like to give all my condolences to the individuals that was affected by these sick, demented monsters that's going to be displayed in this compilation. I thought this was absolutely necessary because there's a lot of individuals on the road that don't understand the magnitude of what could happen out there and that type of people that are lurking out there in the dark. It's a cold world we live in, y'all. Stay safe. By now you've heard about the FBI hunting 500 serial killer truckers. Inside the trucks they found mobile torture chambers. And Interstate I-40 is one in particular that stands out as a major hotspot. The route travels from Wilmington, North Carolina to Barstow, California, running through Raleigh, Nashville, Memphis, Little Rock, Oklahoma City, Albuquerque, and Flagstaff. Convicted serial killer trucker Bruce Mendenhall was arrested July 2007 in Tennessee, found guilty in 2010 of the murder of Sarah Hulbert, after his truck matched CCTV footage. Weeks before his arrest, the body of a naked 25-year-old woman, Samantha Winters, was found wrapped in plastic. She had been shot in the head and found in a dumpster. Sarah Hulbert was found the exact same way. These victims were merely two of at least a thousand women that cops believe have been killed by truckers over the years. When police raided 56-year-old Mendenhall's truck cab, they were in disbelief. Investigators called it a killing chamber. The stash of torture devices included a rifle, a nightstick, tape, handcuffs, latex gloves, sex toys, and a bag of bloody clothing. The DNA found on the clothing in Mendenhall's truck matched five missing or murdered women. One was Karma Purpura, a 31-year-old mother of two who was last seen at a truck stop in Indianapolis, nearly 300 miles away. Also in the truck were Karma's mobile phone and her bank card. This can't help but bring to mind serial killer David Parker Ray, the toy box killer, and the $100,000 he invested in his torture trailer, which he called the toy box. He is suspected of murdering anywhere between 60 to over 100 women between 1957 and 1999. He picked up women, many of them sex workers, or he had his young female accomplice Cindy Hendy lure females back to the premises. She called them packages. Of course, it was a really disturbing trend, what you uncovered, what you ended up following, and that's the trend of murders on the United States highways. There's hundreds of them, and a lot of them at the hands of truck drivers. So can you talk to us about that trend and why we are seeing it? Yeah, so Long Haul is the true crime account of the FBI's Highway Serial Killings Initiative. And the numbers in that initiative are staggering. In fact, they were shocking enough to get me out there back on the road as an investigator riding long haul over 2,000 miles. So here are the numbers that are part of the initiative. 850 murders alongside our nation's highways, almost entirely sex trafficked women. There are currently 200 of those murders that are considered active and unsolved. And when I asked the FBI, how many suspects are you looking at in those unsolved cases? The answer was 450. I think the public needs to know this. If you're traveling this summer for vacation or for the holidays, listen up. As of right now, the FBI is hunting down 500 truck driving serial killers. Before I get into it, if you're traveling this summer, you're gonna wanna be cautious traveling on I-40. So this has been going on for the past 20 years, but it's ramping up. So the FBI is guesstimating that around a thousand plus women have been murdered by long haul truck drivers. But that's not all. They also have murdered two couples as well at truck stops. And these are the weirdos they're catching. So this is actually a chilling last picture of this girl before she was murdered. Basically what they're doing is they're targeting SEX workers um, at truck stops and unsuspecting women. 
What they're doing then is basically torturing these women in the back of their trailers for as long as they possibly want to, and then they end up just murdering them. But the body count is just getting higher and higher, basically so high that they're letting it be known to the public. So the sad part is a lot of these working girls don't have a choice. Either their PIMPs are saying, hey, you gotta go in that truck or else, or hey, you're not gonna get your DRUGS if you don't get in that truck. And they're all ending up dead. So far, the FBI has concluded that it's happening in North Carolina, Tennessee, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, all the way to California. Like I said, I-40 all across America. So if you're traveling this summer, be careful. If you are pulling into a rest stop on I-40, make sure your head is on a swivel because apparently this is becoming a major issue. Before he was caught in 1990, Robert Ben Rhodes is currently serving life in prison without parole at a correctional center in Chester, Illinois, for first degree murder. But he's suspected of killing as many as 50 women between 1975 and 1990. Bro, I'm not surprised. I'm a truck driver myself. I'm gonna tell you a story where I met one of these motherfuckers. FBI is hunting 500, I can't say the word, truckers loose in America. I was in Texarkana, you hear me? And I get to yapping with this, this white dude that kind of looked like him. And we get to yapping about just random shit, the bears and stuff, because we, we, we was in the uh, shipping office. And then uh, the black dude come in there, some black dude come in there, he's like, who got them uh, baby pigs in a cab? In a cab, that means this, inside of here. And he was like, yes, yeah, me, I like the way they squeal. <laughs> He said some weird shit like that. Me and the brother look at each other like, oh, we gonna jump this nigga if he try to do some crazy shit in here. And um, mind you, he went back to normal after we saw that we didn't accept that little weird ass laugh. He went from socially, like it was a socially awkward thing to back to, yeah, back to sports. And man, they are, they are out here. When I tell you, they out here. They're weirdos. Be safe and conceal carry. That's all I can tell you. shamed into it by local county or state law enforcement that demonstrates the need for the FBI to come in. And that was the case with the development of this initiative. It was an Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation crime analyst, a woman named Terry Turner, one of the heroes in my book, who back in about 2003 realized that there were at least 10 young women missing from Oklahoma that had turned up dead around the country near highways. She told the FBI persistently You've got to get in here and take a look at this. And when they did, they said, this is serial killing and we are in. And that was the birth of the Highway Serial Killings Initiative, first acknowledged publicly by the FBI in 2009. Across America, just 25 ex-truckers are in prison for murder. One is Delmas Colvin, a 65-year-old man who was dubbed the Interstate Strangler. Following his arrest in 2004, Colvin told the investigators he didn't keep track of his kills. He couldn't remember them all, but he estimated he killed around 47 to 52 women, almost all sex workers. Like Mendenhall, he wrapped the victims in plastic and duct tape. He just said he enjoyed the killing. Colvin often burst out laughing when recalling the murders of his victims. On one occasion, he said he took a call from his mother while in the midst of murdering a woman. He liked to look into the victim's eyes as they died, he recalled stating, I always sleep well at night. The FBI suspects a serial killer works as a trucker to find victims and then dispose of their bodies across state lines to confuse police. And that's what they think happened to Tammy Jo Zawicki. This college student was driving from Evanston, Indiana to Grinnell, Iowa when her car broke down in Illinois. Yet her body was found nine days later across I-44 in Missouri. She was last seen on August 23rd, 1992, standing near her broken down car at mile marker 83 on I-80, and there was a semi-truck with a rusty orange stripe parked near her car. It seemed like he was trying to help her, but the FBI thinks he was waiting to grab her. Tammy's body was found on a rural stretch of I-44 in southwestern Missouri. She was wrapped in a red blanket and surrounded by duct tape. She'd been stabbed once in the arm and seven times in a circle around her heart. According to the FBI, she'd also been essayed. Witnesses described the driver of the tractor trailer being a white male, 35 to 40, 6 feet tall, and with bushy dark hair. The trucker she was last seen alive with has not been identified. Illinois investigators think this could be a trucker by the name of Lonnie Beardrod. He matched the description at the time, and his trailer home is near where her body was found. And Tammy's body was found wrapped in a blanket with the Kenworth logo, and Lonnie drove a Kenworth truck. 
but to be fair, Kimworth is a large manufacturer. Lonnie Beardrot died, but he isn't the only suspect. Because of the interstate connection, this person could be from almost anywhere. Several other serial killers' names have been brought up in connection to Tammy's case, but as of right now, it's unsolved. Let me know if you want to hear more about highway serial killers and their possible victims. And follow if you like true crime. It's not a one-off act. There were Polaroid photographs of other victims. There were trophies in the lorry. The driver was a man named Volker Eckert. His arrest brought an end to a 32-year career of murder. Eckert was somebody who became much more skilled at committing murder the, the longer that his killing went on. So he had access, he had opportunity, and he really honed his killing routine. The police had no idea just how many victims this long-distance serial killer may have claimed. There would always be the question, were there six dead women, or were there 13, or even 19, or even more? Back then, he was just beginning his brutal career. I was incredibly lucky. Volker Eckert had terrorized Europe for decades and become one of the world's most evil killers. Now to say I hope you enjoyed this compilation to be kind of far-fetched, kind of cynical in my opinion. But what I do hope you got from this here compilation is a sense of awareness and an understanding that at any given moment, your life can change. And that changed for the better. Be aware of your surroundings. Do things that can help ensure your safety out there. I mean, it's not any, nothing's absolute. But air tags, sharing your location with your spouse or with a loved one, definitely be a lifesaver. Once again, stay safe out there, stay motivated, and keep trucking, y'all.